What is up guys? Jason up New 80s Revolution down here in the cave for I'm going to I'm going to go out on a limb and call this again the final COVID update maybe because today <clears throat> let's see so this is a week no no it's um what's today Friday so Tuesday to Tuesday is seven days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So this is 10 days after symptoms began and nine days after the positive test, right? Yeah. Uh, today is like the best day of the past 10 days. I feel a hundred times better. And it was just overnight. Last night, <clears throat> for the past two days, <coughs> I promise you I feel better. For the last two days, I've had like this heavy chest feeling and, and like chasing deep breaths. Um, and fatigued out of, out of this world. Fatigue, like, thankfully I don't have to work. Um, and I'm, I haven't even been using, like, talking on the phone, doing phone work. So I've really just been totally off, off from work. But, um, oh, I would get, you know, I would sleep on the couch. And then when I woke up, like, the kids would get up at, like, 7 or 8. And I would just, I would, like, go back to bed until 11.30, 12 o'clock every morning. Um. And then I would just want to sit on the couch all day and do nothing. And everything was exhausting. We <clears throat> foolishly, maybe not foolishly, but we shoveled the driveway yesterday. And that was like, you know, I felt like I'd worked 10 hours. Um, but today when I woke up, actually like in the middle of the night, you know, when you pop open in the middle of the night, like I could, I could kind of feel different. I, I, I felt better in the middle of the night, but you're not sure because it's the middle of the night. And then this morning getting up, um, I was tired. And I did go back to bed for a couple of hours this morning. But after that, like I just felt so much better. <clears throat> so I don't know. I guess maybe, maybe, maybe it's it's going away from us. Um, the kids are fine. Um, my wife is tired. She's she's like two days, two or three days behind me. So she might have a couple more days of feeling crappy. Um, but man, oh man, what a difference from today, uh, today for, uh, from yesterday. What a huge difference. So that's good. Um, the other thing is while on... Uh, COVID. Um, I got a phone call. First, I got a, I got a, um, I got a messenger message from somebody at a major network, and and um, they're not supposed to say what their major network is, but they send you like a flyer and like a poster of of the the, the show announcements, and it says from the creators or from the from the network that brought you House Hunters International. So I'm assuming that it's HGTV. Um, so, so anyway, somebody from that channel um, contacted me and wanted to wanted me to be part of a casting call for a new show that's coming up. It's supposed to be starting in May. Um, apparently, the network has has agreed to like seven episodes, so it's real. They're going to go for it. It's really going to happen. Um, this happened like four like three, four years ago, and it never, never happened. But anyway, the person wanted me to um, start the casting process to be on a show that was about collectors of, you know, unique things um, who are willing to sell some of their collection. So the show would be like, the way, to, the way they described it was, it would be like an antiques roadshow type, type of thing. Where um, an appraise, you know, so each each episode would be about one particular person. So I, I wouldn't have had like a ten minute clip. I would have had an entire, I assume, half hour episode um, dedicated to the collection, the stories behind the collection, 
blah, blah, blah. That all sounded great. <coughs> that would have been fun. But then you have to sell your collection. Um, and it wasn't like pretend sell. It was apparently sell the collection. And then the second part of your episode is, what do you do with the money that they gave you for your collection? And so they wanted to like, they wanted to know what would we do if we came into, you know, some money and, you know, um, I don't know. So, so I went along with it for the first call and then we were supposed to set up a Skype call for Monday and I was supposed to fill out some paperwork and take some video of the collection and, and all that stuff. And they wanted to talk with my wife and my kids and, and, and then I turned it down yesterday um because i didn't i don't want to sell any of the collection even like so i thought for a while i was thinking like all right obviously the you know the ljn collection is you know there's there's people who have way more you know than me but i guess that would have been like the story you know that would have been wow you know the history behind that collection but then i probably would have had to sell all of the figures and I don't know what they would have given me, like, I don't know, $4,000, $5,000. But then they would want me to do something with the $4,000. Like, you know, we, we were talking about, like, you know, Liam likes Harry Potter, so would we go to, you know, Universal with the money and see the Harry Potter stuff? And, like, if it was, if it was the entire collection, you know, would I put it towards the 80s house? But, like... I don't want to sell anything, and I thought maybe I'd sell, because I have, I have like 430 Nintendo games. I thought, okay, I'll sell off 430 Nintendo games, but is that a show? Do I? There's no passion, you know, for me to talk about the Nintendo games for an entire episode of whatever. Um, so, you know, I said, I, I turned it down. So, I don't know. I don't know if the show's actually going to happen. Um, like I said, this happened like three years ago with a show that was going to be called Collector's Cafe, um, probably on the same network or similar networks. And it would have been like, you know, people just showing off their unique collections. I don't think there was going to be an appraiser. Maybe there was. I don't know. But this one was like, no getting around it. You sell something and you get the money for it. And then the second half of the show, you spend the money. So I don't know what I've just... So, anyway, I said no. I thought about it for a day um, and then backed out. But second time I get to be interviewed by a, a, a major network um, just because of, you know, 2,500 followers on YouTube. <clears throat> so that was pretty cool. But I'm not selling anything. And I don't want to sell anything. And so I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been good for the show. Anyway, uh, the exposure would have been awesome, you know, like national broadcast, maybe. Like, then I started thinking, well, what if it led to like the '80s house? You know, what if, what if I came across so awesome on the show that like, you know, I got brought back, or maybe they gave me my own show. You know, I don't know. I think I made the right decision because I don't want to sell anything. So that's that. So COVID. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to be overconfident, you know. But it might be <clears throat> moving its way out of here, and um, feel great today. And uh, you know, shot down a network that wanted New Eighties Revolution. That's right. Shot them down, hardcore. PACW part of it's been filmed. I might do the match tonight. Terry Funk versus Tito Santana. I'm actually excited. Um, it looks decent. I mean, it's not like world-class quality. You know, it's not like warlock quality, but it's, uh, it's getting there. You know, it'll be fun. You know, you guys want to watch a grown man play with, uh, toys. That's what we're going to do. So that's that. All right, that's the update. Uh, look for PACW in the next 24 hours, if not sooner. Talk to you later. Good night now.